All right. Good morning, everyone. Um, we will start now. Do you have any question before we start? <clears throat> okay, maybe I can ask something, but it's more of a general question about like how to, um, uh, how to uh, I don't know study for this course. Uh, I actually tried to. Um, I actually tried to uh, solve the questions that were uh, suggested for last week, but to be honest, I wasn't able to. And in the end, I wasn't sure if I should uh, be Abi, focusing Abi. on um, oh. the problems or Abi, how to oh. solve them. And, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, 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 can you unmute yourself again? I couldn't hear you well. Okay, in the end, I wasn't sure if I should uh, re um, rewatch the classes or should I, I don't know, uh, watch some uh, keywords to the YouTube. Uh, I don't know, you know, try to understand and try to solve the question. So you basically try to solve the problems uh, from suggested problems, right? Mm -hmm. And you have some difficulties with that? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, what you can do is, um, are you in uh, in the campus or? Yeah, I'm in campus. Well, you can come to my office hours and ask your questions. I mean, oh, that, okay, thank you. That, that will help. And you can also, there is um, this um, we have, let me check. In the math department, we have um, help room. Um, let me see if we have a schedule yet. Yeah, maybe this is not scheduled yet, but I will check this. And we also have a help room. You can go and ask your questions. We basically, there are uh, teaching assistants and they will uh, help for the solutions of your problems. This will also help. Uh, other than that, um, I guess, um, I mean, this lectures and the examples in the book, um, they will be uh, enough to solve the problems and the suggested problems. Of course, uh, some problems are different than what we did, what we do in the class uh, in that, cases uh you can come and ask your questions yeah okay. Okay. Right. thank you thank you okay. yeah okay um all right let me maybe uh remind you what we did last time um so a quick recall we were talking about the solutions of um We were talking about solutions of um, some certain type of differential equations. This is first order linear differential equations. In that case, we had in integrating factor. Um, so um, let's, uh, let me remind the integrating factor. Okay. This is lecture three, by the way. So we had something like this, y prime plus px y is equal to q of x, okay? And um, the integrating factor was some like this, a function mu, um, it's given by e to the integral p of x 
dx. Okay, so you compute this integral and find the integrating factor. Then this differential equation becomes, uh, let's call this star, okay? And star becomes basically this equation, d dx uh, mu of x times y is equal to q of x times mu of x. And by integrating both sides, we solve y, right? So integrate. Uh, both sides and we get some like this mu of x times y is equal to um, integral of q of x mu of x dx and we simply find y from here okay that was what we did last time with a couple of examples. Today, oh, sorry. I was, yeah. I was going to summarize. So we're basically trying to, in the star equation, we're basically trying to get the left side to um, resemble uh, mu of x times y's derivative. Right, right. It's basically left hand side is derivative of one function only. Yeah. That's why we got the mu in that way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just cancel out a px right 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 we had a mixed term and we get rid of that mixed term by choosing mu uh like this yeah okay good all right very good well well of course this only works in the case of uh we have first order linear differential equation so we may have different type of differential equations non-linear uh, differential equations. In that case, uh, we have different methods. And here, first, we will talk about separable equations. So this is 2.2 in the book, um, separable. Equations. Okay. Well, a separable equation is like um, is like this dy dx. The first derivative again. It's the first order differential equation. The first order ODE is separable if it's it's of the form okay if it's of this form um well again we have first order and um It looks like basically a function. Maybe let's take this down a little bit. Oops. Um, on the right hand side, we have two functions like this q of x over p of y. Uh, did we talk about already this? No, we didn't. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sir, I'm taking my past notes. It seems like we covered this before. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. We did this. Um, I'm sorry. I was like. For a moment, I thought we were gonna link to something new from here, so no, 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 I had to tag along. Yeah, that's, that's my mistake. Sorry about that. We already talked about this, right? We talk about separable and um, this integrating factor, and so on. Yeah. 
Now, uh, next thing is we will talk about um, homogeneous equations. Okay. I will talk about this homogeneous equations. So this is now something new. Homogeneous equations. Okay, what's the homogeneous equation? Well, a first order body is homogeneous. Homogeneous if dy dx is equal to f of y over x. Okay, so basically on the right hand side, it's a function of two variables again, x and y on the right hand side, but um, you can write this as a function of one variable. The variable is y over x, okay? Sort of. Um, we will do examples and you understand this better. Well, in that case, how do you check right hand side whether this is homogeneous or not? The easiest way is um, not that, if you have a function f of x phi is, homogeneous and it's it can be written like this f of y over x y over x is like one variable okay if you have this then you have what you have basically um let's multiply both variables with lambda okay f of lambda x lambda is any constant lambda y is equal to let's see what we get well when you multiply this with lambda then you get f of lambda y over lambda x then you cancel out the lambdas here and we get f of y over x which is f of x y again so basically, uh, this is a nice way to check that right-hand side gives you a homogeneous differential equation. In this case, when you multiply with an arbitrary lambda here for any lambda uh, real, okay? So you multiply with an arbitrary lambda and you get the same function at the end, okay? In that case, if you have this, in that case you have, um, homogeneous equation, and we have uh, a nice method to solve uh, homogeneous equation. We, re we replace y over x with another unknown, let, let us call we, okay? Um, and we make our homogeneous equation separable uh, and then solve it, okay? So let's do an example and see what we do um, in that case. Let's say we have dy dt is equal to t plus y. First of all, is this homogeneous? Well, this equation is not a homogeneous OD. It's first order OD, but it's not homogeneous because right hand side, it's f of ty, okay? But you cannot write this as like, f of y over t, because if you multiply with lambda, f of lambda t, lambda y, is equal to what? Lambda t plus lambda y, but this is not equal to f of x, y in general, right? Because f of x, y is t plus y. So you see here, this, is not a homogeneous equation. Thus, let's call star. Star 
is not homogeneous. Still, you can use you can solve this equation. How do you solve this equation, for instance? Integrate both sides. Uh, you can integrate both sides. Well, you cannot directly integrate because on the right hand side we have a function of y. Um, but we have this is a first order linear differential equation, so you can use the integrating factor, right? Right. So we have one answer here: integrating factor, right? So in you, you take this to the left hand side and find the integrating factor and do what we did last time, okay? Um, we can solve it. Using integrating factor. I will not do it. You can do this yourself. Let's give another example. So this is not homogeneous. Let's give an example of an homogeneous differential equation. Uh, in that case, right, P of X is equal to minus one, okay? In that case, P of X is minus one and you find mu and so on. Great. All right. Um, well, let's look at this one, dy dx is equal to y plus 2x over x. Now, is it homogeneous? Well, this is homogeneous because you can write homogeneous since You can write this as y over x plus 2x over x, which is 1. So you see here, this is a function of y over x. If I say y over x is, for instance, v, it is v plus 1. So we're essentially looking for uh, if the function is a function of y over x, or right, if the right. lambdas can cancel each other out. Right, exactly, yes. By the way, yeah, it is two. Uh, chats, same. Uh, okay, isn't it two? Uh, probably, yeah, right, right. Thanks. Oops. Two here. Yeah, so you see this is a function of basically y over x. You can think of like this, okay? Here, f is like x plus two, okay? Or u plus two, or v plus two, whatever. Well, how do you solve the equation in this case? Well, to solve the equation, let's put here star, okay? Or same here, star. What we do is basically, um, we change the variable y with, y over x with, let's call it v, okay? Now you write everything in y, in v instead of y. So we will get rid of y and write everything in terms of v. Um, so from this, y is equal to x times v, okay? Um, we need y prime y prime is equal to, we use the product rule here, derivative of x is 1, 1 times v plus x times v prime, okay? Um, there's one question. Uh, in this type of the equation, homogeneous equation, the coefficient of y over x should it be one? No, it doesn't need to be one, okay? We could have, for instance, uh, five times y over x plus uh, two times x over y, okay? 
as long as you write everything in terms of y over x, that's fine. It doesn't need to be one, the coefficient, okay? So basically we get this y prime. Well, from the start, y prime is what? Y prime is from here. It's equal to uh, v plus two, okay? Because this is v. This is now v, okay? Uh, okay, this is a, there's a good question. What is v? v is a function of x, right? Is a function of x, okay? y is also a function of x. So x is the variable. X and uh, v, y and v are the functions. We get rid of y and introduce new function v, okay? Dependent variable. Well, from here, we get rid of this v and v here. So what we get is basically uh, v prime is equal to two over x. So you see, we get a nice function, nice equation. This star becomes a, a separable equation. Um, well, this is basically dv dx. You can write it like this. So um, from here, v is equal to uh, two times ln x plus a constant. Well, now we return to the original variables. So y over x is v, right? Which implies basically uh, y over x is equal to two times ln x plus c, and y is equal to um, two x ln in absolute value of x, plus c times x. c is a real number here. c is any real number, okay? So this is the general solution of star. All right, any question with this? Can you go over why, why um, or your next? Well, what we did here is we used this one, okay? So y is a function of, v is a function of x, so we get y is equal to x times v, and we use product rule. So derivative of left hand side is y prime here, okay? And derivative of x times v, v is a function of x. So we use the product rule, derivative of x is one, one times v plus x times v prime. So here we use product rule, okay? Okay, now and, I understand, okay. Yeah, great. And we use also here uh, left hand side of the equation because this is y prime is equal to v plus two in the first equation. So we use this and we get rid of v's and so, okay. Any other question? All right, let's, uh, let's do another example. So let's solve this one, dy dx is equal to x squared plus three y squared over. First of all, this is not a linear equation because we have y squared, right? Uh, when you have y squared, it's not linear anymore. So you cannot use integrating factor and those sort of things. And it's not 
um, it's not a separable equation because the top depends on two variables, bottom also depends on two variables on the right hand side. But it is homogeneous. Let's call this f of x, y. So what we can do is we can write this as this. So um, x over y, one over two, plus like this, plus three over two, y over x, okay? Well, let's also call now here uh, y over x is v. Then, as in the previous case, y is equal to x times v, which implies y prime is equal to v plus x times v prime product rule again. And this is equal to from the equation here. Okay. Uh, one over two V plus three half um, so, um, there is something wrong here, right? One uh, over two V, isn't it supposed to be um, one over two, one over V? Uh, yeah, right. Uh, one over two, one over V, right here. Yeah, thanks. Here and this, right? Okay. Three half y over x. We have x over y, x over y is one over v, okay? So we get that. All right, let's, uh, so we basically we get rid of, in the, in the in this equation here, we get rid of, we get rid of y, okay? We write everything in the v. Um, so let's organize this. Uh, x times v prime is equal to one over two v, plus we take v to the other side, it's uh, v over two, okay? And let's divide both sides by x. Or maybe let's keep it like this first. Uh, this is equal to what? Let's uh, equalize the denominator. So it's gonna be one plus v square over. So it may basically be multiplied this with v, Okay, one, one, one plus v squared uh, over two v, okay? Well, from here, you can write like this. This is dv over dx, okay? So what we get is like, um, Or maybe let's write like this first. X times dv over dx is equal to one plus v squared over two v. It's a separable equation now. Okay, um, so it's going to be dv. Maybe let's like this two v dv over one plus v square. Let's integrate this. On the right hand side, we have dx over x. So we cross multiply sort of, okay? Um, dx over x and integrate. Well, the nice thing is these integrals are com easy to compute. Uh, left hand side is basically uh, ln one plus v square, right? You can do the basic substitution to do that. Right hand side is ln 
in absolute value of x plus a constant. Um, so we get simply take the exponential of both sides, we get one plus v squared is equal to e to the ln in absolute value of x plus c. So it's going to be x times e to the c. Or simply, um, oh well, we, we need to go back to the original uh, variables, which is y, original variable y. So what v was y over x, 1 plus y squared over x squared, v is y over x. So it's equal to absolute value of x times Instead of here e to the c, you can say this is c tilde. It's another constant, right? e to the c is a constant, so you can replace with c tilde, another constant. Um, c, you don't need to do that, but it's uh, it looks better. So from here, uh, y is equal. To, maybe let's keep it like this. It's because we have two solutions. So. so this gives the solution in the implicit form, okay? Gives the solution in implicit form. Any question with this? Uh, okay, there is one question. Can, mean, could we integrate the right hand side, one over two V and V? Um, well, the thing is, you cannot do it. You, if you do that, what 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 would you do with this one, V prime? Okay, that's another problem because left hand side depends on two functions, so it's not going to be easy, right? If you integrate this side first, um, there's V prime here, so that doesn't make sense. Uh, there's another question. Could we write this explicit solution? You can write the explicit solution, but there are two solutions. You need to write both, okay? Uh, but you don't need to write the explicit solution in these cases, okay? Uh, the implicit solution is fine. Any other question? Here I would say maybe let's include here C tilde is any real number, okay? Question, comment? Uh, how do we use separable equation? Here, this equation is separable. It's a separable equation, right? On the right hand side, you take x to the bottom here. And then it's going to be like a function of v over function of x. So it's a separable equation. Okay. Any other question? Well, okay, there is one question by Ozan. Uh, well, this is actually what we did. We did the same thing. So you can do it, yeah. Okay. This will work, of course, because this is the same thing. You don't, we equalize the denominators to, to see this integral easy, okay? Um, so. Well, the thing is, when you write like this, maybe okay, maybe I, I will explain here. When you okay, you say that this dv over uh, one over two v plus v over two. How do you integrate this? You cannot separate the integral here, okay? Because the, the well, this this is not like a plus b. It's like one over a plus b, okay? So this is not the same as dv over 
one over two V plus dv over v over two they are not the same right maybe you did this wrong okay all right any other question all right hocam ben bir şey sorabilir miyim bu mutlak x çarpı e üzeri c tam olarak nereden geldi? Orayı kaçırdım da. Uh, well, it follows from here, e to the this, okay? So this is basically e to the ln x times e to the c, right? But e to the ln x is x. Well, they cancel each other, okay? Okay, great. Any other question? Uh, yeah, can I ask a question? Sure. So when we face such an like examples, so do we need always to write y divided by x is equal to y and always do the same steps? Or we can do somehow something else? Uh, if it's in first order uh, and separable, this method always works. Yeah, it, it always works. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's um, move to a different topic. This is modeling 2.3 in the book. modeling with first order OD. Well, now we will consider some real life problems and we will try to solve these real life problems using first order uh, differential equations. Well, there are different, many different types of um, uh, all the uh, real life problems you can try to solve here, we will touch uh, some of those, um, but you can find more in the book. There are many examples and suggested problems as well. So to solve um, problems with ODE, uh, what we need to do is first, of course, the first thing is you read the problem carefully. I assume you did you do this. Well, next thing is determine dependent and independent variables. Basically, what is the variable? What is the function? Okay, you're trying to solve uh, independent. variables okay next relate the rate of change in the problems rate of change is like the derivative right derivative of y derivative of the function so you will relate derivative of something with derivative of something else uh relate the rate of change in the problem and finally find initial conditions so this will be given in the problem and so the initial value problem. So it becomes an initial value problem at the end and you solve it with the techniques you learned here. Uh, you can try, you know, this integrating factor. If the separable, it is easy. If it is not, but homogeneous, then you apply this uh, homogeneous technique to make it separable, then solve it. Let's um, do some examples.
So this is application one. And it's uh, Newton laws of uh, motion. Second law of motion. Well, basically we have a mass and we push forward this mass with a force. Okay. And so this is the force acting on this object and let's call the initial um, position y zero, which is the position at the time zero, okay? Then you move it and it comes to that point, let's say here. Okay. So this position is now y is equal to y of t. So this is the position of uh, the object at the time t, y t, let's write here, y t. It's the displacement, uh, displacement of the mass. So it's derivative y prime t gives what? We know this from physics. The derivative of the displacement function is the speed, right? It's v of t is the speed of the mass. And second derivative or derivative of um, velocity, uh, speed or velocity, whatever, a of t, which is v prime t. This is the uh, acceleration. Acceleration. Then Newton law, second law says, it's the total force on the object is equal to m times a. Here, m is the mass of the object, okay? Mass, so it's like given usually in kilogram or gram or whatever. Um, and the Newton second law says it's equal to m times a. What is a? a is acceleration and it's given by dv dt the derivative of uh, velocity with respect to time um, and it's also written as we was remember the derivative of uh, y the displacement function so it becomes uh, d square uh, y over dt So the total force, let's, say, let's write here, total force is equal to this. Well, let's do an example. An example. Consider an object falling without uh, air resistance. So there is no air resistance.
we have such a picture, we have a mass. Okay. And this falls down. Okay. Well, the first position at this level, let's call it Y zero. It's the position at the time zero, okay? And um, there is a gravitational force, F, is equal to M times G, right? G is the gravitational constant. Um, this is gravitational. G is like, G is the gravitation constant. It's close to 9.8 meter uh, per uh, second square. And yt here, let's say it moves to, it downs to this level. And this is yt, it's the position at time t. Is the position of the mass of the object at time t. So we will write a differential equation uh, which involves y and try to obtain uh, the displacement y in terms of uh, this quantity here, g. Okay. So there might be an initial velocity. If there is an initial velocity, let's say V zero is V of zero is the initial velocity of the object. Well, of course, if you drop this mass, object uh, without any force, it's basically uh, zero, right? Initial velocity is zero, but uh, you can do this with a force and then there is an initial velocity in that case. So let's write the initial value problem here. Well, remember that there is this equation Let's call this star, star here, okay? So this says, you can cancel out here, for instance, um, or maybe let's okay, write like this. The total force is mg, right? It's F is equal to mg. At the same time, this is equal to M times A. A is um, the second derivative of Y. That was the acceleration, okay? Remember, this was A of T, the acceleration of the object. You can cancel out M's and you basically get what? Um, so the initial value problem is this. D square, uh, D square Y DT is equal to G. G is the constant, gravitational constant. 
uh, what are the initial values? This is the second order differential equation. So we have two initial values. Uh, the first one is y0 is y sub 0. It's a constant, the initial position. And the initial velocity is uh, v0. It's the derivative at 0, right? It's v sub 0. All right. So we will solve this initial value problem to get the displacement function. All uh, right, thanks for this. Uh, there is T square here, second derivative. So let's solve this differential equation quickly. It's an easy differential equation. You integrate basically left-hand side and right-hand side. So it becomes dy dt is equal to g times t plus a constant, let's call the c1. c1 is a constant. Differentiate this again, and it becomes uh, d, I'm sorry, y is equal to g t squared over two plus c1 t plus c2. So what are c1 and c2? Well, y0 is equal to y sub 0. When t is equal to 0, it becomes c2. So we get that c2 is equal to y0. What about y prime? y prime 0 here, we can use this one. OK, so y prime 0 is equal to uh, on the one side, it's v0, the initial velocity. And from the equation here, it's basically 0 plus c1. So we get that c1 is equal to v sub 0. Now let's combine all this and write the displacement function. So y of t is basically g times t squared over two plus c1 t, c1 is v0, the initial velocity times t plus c2, c2 is y0, okay? This gives the uh, position of the object falling. Any question with this? All right, let's give a break here for 10 minutes. So let's meet at uh, 11.45. A uh, quick question. Yeah. Um, let's say G, G or A for a general case is not a fixed number. It's just some sort of a function or something else. G is, G is fixed, but A is not fixed. It's like uh, when the object is speeding up, speeding then a is acceleration is um, getting larger and larger right yeah a is not fixed a is not fixed it depends on time if the if the speed is constant uh, or speed is linear let's say then in that case uh, a is fixed but if you speed up speed, speed up so fast then the acceleration is not constant yeah All right. In that, in that case, what do we do? Like, in, like for a case, instead of G, we plug in a, for example. No, no, no. Here, uh, this is the general case. Um, in, in this case, G is always constant. It's the gravitational constant. It, it is the gravitational constant which comes from Earth. So this applies for just this case, free fallen. Uh, Triple, um, uh, where or, the... or if you apply some force or air resistance, you still have gravitational force plus something else. Basically, wherever the acceleration is a constant number, no changes. Um, no, no, what I'm saying is, let's say there is also a resistance here and there is another force here, then you find the total force. Yep. Okay. And the total force is equal to any weight it's equal to m times the acceleration. Because okay. acceleration is not constant. It depends on uh, how fast the object is moving. So this 
Um, this right hand side of the equation is always the same. It's always this, but left hand side here, this may change, okay? Okay, I yeah. got it. Great. All right, I'll uh, see you at 11.45.
All right, welcome back. So let's continue with uh, another application. Do you have any questions so far? So we have application number two. Newton's law of cooling. Well, here T is time as usual. TS by TS, we note the temperature of the surrounding system. So for instance, temperature of the room uh, in some cases, it might be temperature of some other things. And uh, by T, which is a function of small t, it's the temperature, temperature of the object at any time T, temperature of the object, at any time t. And k is the cooling or heating constant. It's a constant, depends on the heating or cooling. Um, uh, object here, okay, source here. Then Newton laws of cooling says um, you can find the temperature of the object by using this differential equation, first order differential equation. The derivative of T is equal to minus K times T minus TS, okay? Well, it's a separable equation, as you see here. Um, so we can solve this equation easily. Let's do an example. So suppose a thermometer a thermometer is placed in a room with constant temperature constant temperature TS, which is 10 Celsius. Okay, um, let's go over this again. There's one question. Um, so we have in this sort of uh, application, we have a, an object in a surrounding system 
TS denote the temperature of the surrounding system, for instance, temperature of the room. And in this example, for instance, we place a thermometer in a room. So the room temperature is the surrounding, surrounding temperature. It's constant, uh, 10 Celsius, OK? Um, and T here denotes the temperature of the object, OK? And K is a cooling constant. It's uh, a constant. You will find out this constant using the initial values okay, later. And that's it. So we have this example. We have a thermometer placed in a room with a constant temperature, 10 Celsius. Initially, thermometer shows Twenty two Celsius, okay. It shows twenty two Celsius, and after two hours, it shows sixteen Celsius. determine the value of the thermometer after three hours. Okay, so we know the initial uh, value on the thermometer, which is 22. We place this thermometer in a room, so it's cooling, right? Because room temperature is uh, smaller than um, the thermometer, uh, temperature of the thermometer, which is 22. Um, so after two hours, it becomes 16 Celsius. And the question is, what is the value of the thermometer after three hours? Well, let's write the equation Newton laws of by using Newton laws of cooling, the differential equation. So it says basically um, d t over d, d small t is equal to minus k times t minus the surrounding temperature. Surrounding temperature is the room temperature, which is 10 Celsius, and it says it's constant. So let's put here 10. Um, okay, let's put just 10. So this is uh, the equation we will try to solve it. We don't know k here. Um, well, it's a first order differential equation. The initial values are, there is one initial value and another one is given as well. And we will use two initial values to find uh, two constants. Basically one is k, the other will come from the solution. Um, so t zero is, Twenty two and T two is after two hours, it is sixteen. And what the question is, what is T three, right? So this is the question. So let's solve this initial value problem. It's a separable equation. You can write it like DT over take all the capital T's on the left hand side, T minus ten and integrate on the right hand side minus k dt and integrate, okay? Well, left hand side is basically logarithm, right? Natural logarithm, ln t minus 10 is equal to minus k times ln, um, T. You don't need an absolute value here because T is the time. T must be positive, right? Time is always positive. So uh, you don't need an absolute value here because T is positive. Time is always positive, right? Well, let's, from this, let's find out capital T, exponent, take the exponential of both sides. We get T minus 
10 in absolute value. Um, is equal to Hocam. Hocam orası T olacak galiba. LNT değil de. All right. So this should be T. So. Oh wait. Then. Hmm. Okay. Right. So we take the exponential, uh, we get t minus 10, it's e to the minus k t plus a constant c, oh, plus c here, sorry, plus c here, um, right. Uh, it's gonna be e to the minus k t plus c like this. Well, uh, here we can get rid of the absolute value. The reason is uh, the temperature of the object, T is the temperature of the object, right? It's always greater than 10 because room temperature is 10. It never goes down 10, right? So we can write here without the absolute value because T is always greater than 10. Remove the absolute value because T is greater than or equal to 10 because room temperature is 10, right? So it, can, it cannot go down below uh, 10 Celsius. And from here, we get simply T is equal to 10 plus um, E to the minus K T plus C. Okay. Well, let's find out K and C here. T zero is twenty-two. At the same same time is ten plus e to the zero plus C, which is e to the C. So <clears throat> C is here. Uh, Ln twelve. Okay. Uh, well, let's find out K. Um, when T is equal to two, it is 16. And this is 10 plus Okay, there's one question, e to the power c, can we say, instead of this, can we say c? You can do it, that's fine. You can do that as well, like in the previous example. Um, 10 plus, well, what is t? t is two, it's gonna be e to the minus two k plus, C is now ln 12 is equal to 16. So this tells you basically e to the minus 2k times e to the ln 12 is simply 12, okay? Is equal to um, six. Or you can say, e to the minus 2k is equal to one half. And from here, minus 2k is equal to ln one over two, which is minus ln two. So k is equal to ln two over two. So what we get basically, 
we get the following t is equal to maybe let's write it like this t of t is equal to 10 plus e to the minus ln 2 over 2 times t plus c c is ln 12 so e to the ln 12 is 12 so basically this is times 12 okay any question with this? Oh, we're not done yet. We will find t of three. So t of three, after three hours, it becomes um, 10 plus 12 times e to the minus ln two over two times three. Uh, well, you can basically write this in a simple form. It's like 10 plus, e to the ln 2 is 2, uh, so it's like uh, 2 cubed 8, uh, so it's 2 to the minus 3 over 2, okay? And this is approximately a times 12, so times 12, this is approximately, of course you don't need to do that, approximately 14. So after three hours, it drops to 14, about 14. Any question so far? Hocam, sesim geliyor mu? Geliyor. Ee, t sıf, t'yi genel denklemini bulurken 10 artı e üzeri eksi kt artı c dedik ya, onu e üzeri eksi kt çarpı e üzeri c diye ayırıp e üzeri c'ye yeni bir c esayen etsek de aynı sonucu evet, buluruz değil mi? Bulursun, tabii ki bulursun. Sadece mesela C'yi elen 12 değil, 12 bulmuş oluruz ama aynen, aynen. değişim olmaz. Aynen, aynen öyle. Anladım. Teşekkür ederim hocam. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could write, instead of here, you could write, um, where is it? Yeah. In the solution. Instead of writing like this, you could write e to the minus kt times c or c tilde, whatever because e to the c is another constant and you can go ahead with that. Uh, you will get the same, okay? Any other question? All right, um, let's do another application. Application number three. Um, now we have some mixing problems. Well, what we do here is we have a tank like this, and we fill in um, here with some water, let's say. It's a mixture, okay? And there is a mixture here. And at the si same time, the mixture flows out from here, okay? So there is a mixture flows in and flows out at the same time. And this mixture contains some chemical. Here chemical is, it can be salt, sugar, or a real chemical, okay? Depends on the problem. So let's write here. There is a concentration, concentration of, so this concentration is C1 
concentration of the chemical, okay, C1 gram per liter flows in at a rate let's say R1, so these are some numbers, liter per minute, okay? And at the same time, here, some concentration. of C2 gram per liter flows out at a rate R2 liter per minute. So R1 and R2 are given. Okay, and the concentration of the chemical in the fluid is given as well by C1 and C2. And what we're gonna find is we will find after a certain time, what is uh, the quantity of the chemical inside this mixture, mixture, okay? So here, T is time again, QT, it's right here. QT is the amount of chemical in the tank. This chemical can be sugar, salt in the tank at any time T. Well, VT is the volume, volume of the mixture. It's volume of the mixture. Of course, this the volume may change by time, depend, depending on uh, the mixture flows in and out, okay? Um, volume of the mixture at time T, Well, what is, uh, for instance, here C2? C2, C2 is the concentration of uh, the mixture flows out, right? Um, so you can write this equation for C2. C2 is basically, let's say at time T you have that much Q2 amount of chemical, and the volume is Vt, the volume is Vt, right? So this is basically the gram per liter, okay? So you can use this formula to write C2. Um, this is one formula we will use. But the main formula is here. Uh, so basically we will try to find QT. So to find QT, we will use this equation. The change in the amount of the chemical QT by time T, it's basically rate in, right? So there is a chemical flows in. So we have rate in the change in uh, the solution and rate of change in the solution and some chemical flows out solution flows out 
So we need to subtract this one. So this is rate out. Okay. So what are the units here? The units must be dq over dt. dq is, well, q is basically gram. t is time. So this is like gram per minute, for instance. Depends on the problem. Sometimes it's kilogram over second, kilogram over minute. But anyway, it's like some mass over time, okay? And gram per minute again. So what are this rating and rate out? Well, it's basically rate in is, so let's first compute this rate in. Well, remember that here concentration of C1 gram per liter flows in at the rate of R1 liter per minute. So if you multiply this two, basically you get rid of the liters. Okay, it's gram over minute. So this is rate in, okay? So C1 Oops. C1 times R1 gram per minute minus what is rate out? So some mixture flows out here, right? And what is the rate of this flow? Well, we have concentration C2 gram per liter and it flows out at the rate of R2 liter per minute. So if you multiply this two, it becomes C2 R2 gram per minute. Gram per minute, okay? So this is the equation we will use to solve this sort of uh, problem. Okay. Well, let's do one example. Of course, there are going to be initial values. Uh, the amount of the chemical at the beginning, for instance, it can be given. Then using this initial value and differential equation, first order differential equation, we will find the amount of uh, amount of chemical inside the solution. So at time t, at t is equal to zero initial, time, a tank contains 50 kilogram salt is sold in a thousand liter of water, okay? So the initial amount of salt is given here, Q0, basically. And the water containing 100 gram of salt. Per liter so this is the concentration of the salt flows in is entering the tank at a rate of Thirty liters per minute. Okay. 
And that mixture is living. The tank at the same rate so basically it flows and flows in and out at the same rate and we will find the amount of salt in the tank after a very long time. Okay. So again, uh, we have a tank and there's a water flows in um, at a rate of 30 liter per minute. And it contains a hundred gram of salt uh, per liter. And the mixture is flows, is, is leaving the tank at the same rate and we'll find the amount of salt in the tank after a very long time. That means basically T goes to, time goes to infinity, okay? So to solve this, we will write the equation, differential equation. Uh, there is one answer, it is 100 times 1000 over 30, let me see. Uh, no, it's not. Let's see what we get. No, the thing is, it flows in okay, but um at the same the flows out it flows in and flows out at the same time right so the, the volume is always the same we have same volume of the mixture okay so the mixture inside the mixture um the the amount of the chemical will change by the time uh so if you dry is close it's 50 but it's not 50 maybe you did something mistake some small mistake All right, we have some guess. Well, anyway, we cannot do it without um, writing the equation of the differential equation, which uh, gives this, which models this real life problem. So basically we will deal with such a problem. The change in the quantity, dq dt, okay? So what is q here? Q is basically, um, the amount of salt, maybe let's write this first. So say QT, the amount of salt at time. T. And Q0 here, the initial amount is, at the beginning, we have 50 kilogram. So um, it's, well, by the, by the way, unit is kilogram here. So we will um, write everything in kilogram. So here it is 50, okay. 
Oh, uh, okay, there is one right answer. It is 100, right? The 100 will be the answer. Good. Well, so we have what? We have this equation dq dt is equal to rate in minus rate out. Okay. Uh, what is rate in? Rate in is basically it flows in. Um, the water containing 100 gram per liter. So it's 100 gram is 0 0.1 kilogram per liter times 30 liter per minute. So it flows in, in a rate of 30 liters per minute. Okay, we have this. So this is rate in minus rate out. So rate out is what? Well, we have Q T kilogram in the solution and it rates uh, it rate it flows out in the same rate. What is the rate here? It's uh, 30 liter per minute. So it's gonna be well. Qt over, what is the volume here? The volume is, so this is the concentration of the uh, mixture flowing out. Uh, Qt is the gram and the volume is Vt is what? Flows in and flows out. So it flows in and flows out at the same rate. So volume doesn't change. And we have 100 liter of wa uh, water. So it's always 100, okay? The volume doesn't change. The volume is constant. It's not always constant. It depends on the problem. Okay, if uh, the rate of uh, flow in and flow out they are different, then the volume may change. Here it's constant. Okay. Times. So this is what this is kilogram per liter times uh, it flows out at the same rate. So it's gonna be 30 liters per minute. Well, basically we get what we get, let's write in a simple form, dq over dt is equal to three minus um, three Q over hundred. Okay. So this is a first order linear differential equation. Uh, it's not thousand thirty over thousand three over hundred. Okay. So we cancel out the zero. Well, here mu t is uh, well, we don't even need that. You can do it, but it's easier than that. You don't need um, here integrating factor because it's a separable equation. It's basically um, 300 minus 3q, okay, over 100. So you can write this as dq over 300 minus 3q and integrate is equal to dt over 100, okay?
Okay, there is one question why we have here for the rate out Q2 over 1000. So this is C2, the concentration of the chemical salt in the water. And this is R2, okay? It flows out at the same rate, so it's R2. That's why we have this. All right, um, well, we are almost done here. Let's solve this equation. So we get basically um, minus one over three, integrate this, it's gonna be minus one over three ln 300 minus three Q is equal to um, T over 100 plus a constant. And from here, you can do it yourself. Q of T, solve this equation, sorry. Oh, oh we lost the page, sorry. Well, we lost the page, sorry for this, but we had this. Let me continue with this, okay? So we had um, Q of T is equal to 100 minus C times E to the minus three T over 100, okay? So this is the general solution but it's an IVP initial value problem. So, um, Hocam, bundan bir basamak öncesinden devam edebilir misiniz? Tamam, bir saniye. Çok pardon. All right, let's um, try to share with this. Okay, so we had, let me remind what we had here. Um, we had this equation DQ over dt is equal to um, three minus three q over 100, which is 300 minus three q over 100, okay? And then you can solve this by integrating the following. Um, dq over 300 minus 3q is equal to dt over 100, okay? And you simply integrate both sides and you get qt by this, but q of zero was 
50. Okay. So basically, this tells you that 100 minus C times, when we plug zero, it becomes E to the zero is one. So it is 50. So from here, C is equal to 50. That means basically the amount of the salt here at any time T is given by 100 minus 50 times e to the minus 3t over 100. The question is after a very long time, what is qt? So as t goes to infinity, qt will approach to where? Well, this will approach to zero as t goes to infinity. That's why we have qt approach to 100, okay, 100 kilogram. After a very long time. Okay. Um, right. Um, why we have the numerator? Uh, well, it follows from here. Why do we have this? Basically, it follows from this over this one is equal to, it's like cross multiply, okay? Clear now? Any, any question, any comment? Okay, uh, let's stop here. Um, I will put, of course, these notes uh, with some corrections um, in the last part. I will rewrite this and put it on uh, midpot to class. Um, see you on Friday. Bye. Thank you, John. Have a nice day.